All right, we are live. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I'm Dawn. This is Amy, and we're going to talk today about getting started in real estate investing. So why are we talking about this, Amy? Like, I am so excited to have this one-on-one -on -one conversation with you, but yet share it with my audience and whoever else ends up finding it. But the real estate investing journey is such a complex and long one for some of us, because I used to call myself an investor. We had five different real estate investments properties. And then I sold everything in the last downturn of the real estate market. And so my goal this year is to buy one investment property by the end of the year and over the next seven years to have at least 10. So, and I kind of have my own strategy going only because I've been talking to you. I've gone to a couple of your classes. So, so grateful for you to have this conversation with me today. So first of all, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, your company, what you do, and then we'll we'll kind of get started with it. Yeah, thank you for having me. So, my name is Amy Ayler. Um, I consider myself a residential financing strategist. Uh, yes, I am a mortgage lender. Have been in the mortgage business for thirty three years. I've been here at Cornerstone Home Lending for five. And I think it's important uh, for myself as a lender to position myself with a company that um, acquired a bank. And what that does is it gives me flexibility to lend in multiple states. So I have been in the industry for 33 years, actively investing in real estate for 25. And I find that this market, this economy, this um, society, this need for communication and relationship is just the perfect market for a lender like me, because I do like to learn what my clients' goals are. And most people right now see the great big picture and opportunity, and that is real estate investing. Yes, definitely. So, and I love the title of your team. They, it, what is it? Think big. Well, I, your tagline, everything. Every time I see it, I'm like, man, I should have thought of that. <laughs> that should be mine. But so we're big live home loan group. So I don't have to have my name on a placard or anything. Um, it's big. I'm, we're bigger than that. Uh, but we think big, live big, love big and give big. And we live by those principles. I love it. I need to just go to work for you. <laughs> no, not. I'm just kidding. Numbers, not my thing. That's why we're here right now and why I have this financial freedom series this year where I'm building a library that can help people in the future, help people now. People are watching it now and it's just been great. So um, thank you for being a part of it. So let's start with everybody's number one question. And that is, where do I start, Amy? Like this all sounds great, but they get on TikTok, they get on, on bigger pockets, they get on all these things. And they're like, before you know it, you've listened to 10 things and you're like, oh, I'm too confused to even know what to do. So what's your best advice for a new investor to just get started? Well, and again, if there's a lot of noise out there and you can get over inundated with information and it's just too much. And most of us are so focused on what other people are doing and why, and it distracts us for our own goals. So quite honestly, it's all about what your one, five and 10 year plan is. And for me, Investing was always about where did I want to be in one, five or 10 years down the road? Where would my children be? And how could I grow a real estate portfolio where every property that I purchased had more than one intention? It was a dual purpose kind of thing. And so to simplify it, what I would encourage everyone to do is just write down literally on a piece of paper, one, five, and 10. And it sounds ridiculously simplistic, but I promise you the majority of investors or potential investors that I talk to, 
they're never on the same page with their spouse or their partner. Um, doesn't mean that you have to have a spouse or a partner to invest, but you need to know whether for yourself or for your partner and your spouse, are y'all on the same page and where are you headed? That starts giving you some clarity. So prime example, when we first got into investing and because I'm a mortgage lender and because our market is feast and famine, one of the things that I wanted to do immediately was make sure that I had another home in my neighborhood that was about half the size that cost about half the mortgage payment that if something were to happen to my industry something more to happen or i had experienced some financial mismanagement of my own how could i move my family and keep my kids going to the same schools because for me i grew up same elementary junior high high school and that meant a lot to me and my husband as well so we we went to school with the same people year after year we didn't travel a lot so for me personally when I was looking for that property, number one, it was within my neighborhood. And so, and it was dual purpose, actually tri-purpose. It was my backup plan if I financially mismanaged. And full disclosure, I've had to rebuild and start over. So I did file bankruptcy in 07 and had to completely rebuild. So I wanted that backup plan for me, that safety net for me. Also, it was one story. And in my neighborhood, there's a lot of two stories and hills. So I wanted one story kind of flat where you weren't driving up in the driveway like this. And I wanted a good rental. The reason I wanted one story was because dual purpose. If my parents wanted to move and be closer to my family, it was a home for them. I could take care of my family. Yeah. Thirdly, it would be a great investment for a long-term rental. My neighborhood wouldn't allow short-term rentals. So a long-term rental and it, and as a one story, it kind of casted a wider net for potential tenants. Now, how did I start? Well, I had to start by saving. So I did save money in order to be able to purchase that first investment home. However, one of a great way, especially if you own your own primary residence, a great way to get started, like looking for capital is in your own equity. So I encourage everyone to look into getting a home equity line of credit because all of us have experienced quite a bit of appreciation over the last few years. And let's be honest, equity is completely phantom. It's this number that you put on an Excel spreadsheet makes you feel good, warm and fuzzy about your net worth. But it really is just sitting there doing nothing for you unless you're tapping into it and using it to grow wealth in real estate. So that's another way and a way that I personally have tapped into equity to get started. I love that. I love that for the investor or the person who's going to be financially responsible. Now, there's been times in my life even, and as you just said, like, mm -hmm. for one thing, people like you and I, we're a little bit more risky. Like, we will take a risk and we'll kind of put ourselves out there because we know, hey, we were, I mean, for me, I was looking to make more money when I made that money. So yeah. I always know I could get right back on and do it again. But in, in the past few years, I've, I've experienced this where I just always thought things would be this good. And so now I'm like, dang it. Why didn't I do this with that money? Why didn't I do that? You know, but yeah. you, you know, you can only move forward. And what that does to you is really makes you become so much more financially responsible. If you, if you want that, like a lot of people yeah. don't even want that. They don't even, you say one, five, but 10. And they're like, I don't even know what I want tomorrow. <laughs> so I'm right there with you. I'm a planner. I have planned and then I just got so busy and I did it. But now I am. And now I'm bringing everyone on this journey with me. So 
I love all of what you're saying. So that is really it. It's like financial goals. Like what are your goals? What are your investment goals? So one of the other guest speakers that I have on here, her name is Amber and she's with the credit couple and they deal with credit and budgets and helping people to financially manage their money. And so I, I love how this all just goes so hand in hand with everyone. And then one, just so you know, Amy, one of my other guests is Fred Cludius. He is an estate planning attorney here in New Braunfels, and he's amazing. And it's like, once you get all of this, you have to make sure that you have your estate planned out in case something happens to you. So 100%. Yeah, this is all a great financial series. So for you, homework, number one is sit down and figure out what are your one year, five year and 10 year goals. And, yes. and, and, what, and what is the fear that is stopping you from moving forward with those? Because my fear at that time was what if something were to happen and a downturn would occur? Because again, I've been in the industry for 33 years. Yeah, we've seen, seen some it. Wild rides. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I had to address my fear. And my fear was not having a place to go. And now that I have children, I need to be more financially responsible and I need to, I wanted to do it for them. And so, you know, for some people that fear is they like to have X amount of dollars in a savings account. They need to have X amount of salary set aside. My thing, my fear that I had to overcome was I had to have another property within my community just as a backup because that's what made me feel comfortable. Once that was established and I had my tenant in there, then it was like on to the next. And again, sitting down with my one, five and 10 year plan with my husband, it was like, OK, now what? And and it was like, OK, well, now we want to look at Fredericksburg, Texas. So that was our next thing. And why did we go to Fredericksburg? You know, and well, because one, my husband's family's from there. Two, my mother-in-law was running the mail and um, it was killing her. It was really hurting her back. And I thought, what a great opportunity to go and purchase a home in Fredericksburg as a second home because it's reasonable distance and let my mother-in-law manage it for us. Um, she would get paid comparably to her running the mail, but it's really a fun job and yeah. it's not wearing on her body. And this was, um, this was in 2012. So Fredericksburg was hot, but it wasn't hot like it is hot now. And so, you know, what an amazing opportunity. And again, we got to purchase a home, putting 10% down. It was a second home. We created it as a business eventually and became really lucrative and successful and later sold that, made a lot of money. That got my husband on his 10-year plan, which was to manage our properties and get out of the corporate hustle and bustle because he worked for Dell. He wasn't seeing himself going anywhere without going and doing a lot of traveling. And we didn't want that for our family. So that's why going back to the basics of one, five and 10, where you want to be, it kind of helps you see the vision because then you're not following this TikTok influencers vision. You're following your own vision and the clarity is right there. It makes it more simplistic. Yeah. And there's so many different ways that you can invest in real estate. So many different purposes that you, there's not one, for one thing, let me make it clear. In my eyes, real estate investing is not a get rich quick kind of thing. It is a long-term strategy for you to create wealth. So I think that when I went into it the first time, I was all about, I, I, I literally have chased this my entire life until the last few years is what it's a get rich quick thing. Now I'm more about, I want an amazing team. I want to live the life that I want to live right now with my husband and my kids. I don't need a whole lot, but I, my goals are just so different. So 
you know, if you're thinking that this is a get rich quick kind of thing, probably not going to happen. And so really base your goals off of a one, five, 10 plan. And then by that 10 year, hopefully you're there, but um, and you know, I'm, I have the perfect business because I am a, have a real estate business. And so the marketing and everything that I'm doing right now is turning everything around to be about finding those investment properties. If it's not something for me, I could turn it into a real estate deal and kind of really get that out there. So I'm excited about what I'm working on behind the scenes with all of that. But really, it, you know, and if you're not a real estate agent and that's something that you're interested in. I have a great plan that I would love to talk to you about because I feel like re the real estate business, like it's it's a struggle. It's a hard one. But if you set your goals and they're long term goals and it's not about living paycheck to paycheck, it's a very rewarding one that could lead you into the real estate investing. So it's all kind of coming full circle for me right now. I've been an agent for over 20 years mm -hmm. and I've loved it, but it has been a up and down roller coaster ride. So, yeah, and I'm thankful for. 06, 07, and 08, because that was the last pain that I went through. And I did learn from it. And it, you're right. I mean, when it's good, you think that ride's going to last forever. And I can tell you, um, knowing that I have a lot of equity in my own primary residence and knowing that I have a real estate portfolio that is appreciated and I have some properties that are fully paid off and some that are, I have STR and MTR and LTR. So short-term, mid-term, long-term, and I have income producing properties. And when I look at my real estate portfolio and I am making money every month, it really does help you live differently. It helps yeah. you feel relaxed. I, like everybody else, am slower right now. And it is a little scary because when you go full throttle in 2020 and 21, and then it's like hit the brakes, there's this fear. And naturally you would want to retract. But what I would encourage everybody to do is if you have if you're in a financial position to just lean in a little bit, you'll be so thankful that you did because unfortunately there will be others that have financial mismanagement, just like I had in 07, they will file bankruptcy. They will have stress. They, they could have go through a divorce. They could have um, real life financial situations and stressors, and no, we're not expected to have this foreclosure situation right. happen. But what we will have, unfortunately, is we will have divorce and we will have relocation. And I hate to take advantage of people's missteps, but that is life. And mm. the opportunity for investors is going to be great. Um so I just think that if you have your one, five and 10 year plan and you have your markets that you're intentionally watching and what's beautiful about this market, Donnie, you know, this is like if you've got 10 must haves. I mean, how exciting that you're in a market where you're probably going to get all 10 of your must have <laughs> versus yeah. getting maybe two of the 10 and having to make a decision in 30 minutes and go yeah. crazy over ass. That's what I keep telling my buyers. Like I literally did a video and it was, it was on TikTok and everything. I'm like a message to all of you buyers who have been trying to buy a house for the past two years and couldn't because you got beat out. Now's yeah. your time. Who cares what the interest rate is? Get whatever you could get to get in the game. Get in the yeah. game because it starts with your first home. Yeah. Literally, my son's wanting to rent a house right now. And I'm like, no, you're 20 years old. His girlfriend is 24. And I'm just like, you guys, no, we got to get you into a house. Like, you're yeah. not going to go waste that money. And so that's where the start is. Even my own son, my yeah. oldest son, just moved to Lindale, Texas. And interest rates were like six and a half when he bought. And he's like, mom, I don't feel like I'm, I'm going to buy it, buy it, just buy it. <laughs> I'm giving you the money, the down payment or my 3%, like buy it. 
and it will be a perfect rental after 12 months. Well, you, so, made, you just made a really good point. I don't want to forget it. So yeah. this whole one, five and 10 and this intentional investing, it's it's not just about growing your real estate portfolio. It can be about purchasing your first home. Mm -hmm. And that's because when we filed bankruptcy, um, we had to start completely over. So what did we do when we came up with our one, five and 10? We focused on that home. OK, now we're going to purchase our new primary residence. What are those must haves? And just to give you a few, I knew um, not only what neighborhood I wanted to live in, but I knew that I wanted my children to have walkability to the elementary and to the junior high. I knew I wanted to be on a green belt. I wanted evening shade. I wanted a uh, master in down. Texas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's important. And um, so I knew what I wanted. And when I got that granular with my search in my neighborhood, there was only a handful of homes that fit that criteria. And then what I did was I just started saving and watching and being very intentional about watching that market. And when that home that fit all those boxes, checked all those boxes, came on the market, we made a move. Now, now um, I could have done three and a half percent FHA. And let's just say you you are a first time home buyer and maybe you're coming into New Braunfels or Buda or wherever you're coming into a market and, and, and you're buying that starter home, that first home. Maybe you're doing it by yourself and you don't need all the bells and whistles and you don't need the, the huge home. You know, buying a home, putting three and a half percent down, going FHA, owning it for 12 months and saving, being very diligent about your saving um, and then buying another house after 12 months and converting your primary to a rental and then doing it again. That's a marvelous strategy. Yeah. Um, and I, to have your first home be a two to four unit property, um, going FHA, putting three and a half percent down and owning it for 12 months and then going and buying again and converting that is a really true four door income producing property. Although that's hard to find yeah. in this market, yeah. but you can keep your eyes open for it. Um, that's an amazing opportunity too. So many, many strategies. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, you know, and Amy, like you said, you are a financial strategist. So you're the person anybody needs to call to have the conversation, to see where you are and get the process started. If this is something you're interested yeah. in, I'm going to put Amy's information in the video details down below if you're watching this on YouTube. And, um, you know, I am just so grateful that I met you because it literally has been fate. And I was praying for somebody like you to come into my life Aww. for the reason that I, I didn't want to go this alone. I wanted to be confident in the direction I was going. And I, I just have all of that now. And now I also have a one, five and 10 year plan. So <laughs> I'm very excited. So I'm, thank you. I'm glad so you much. found me. <laughs> me too. So thank you very much. We'll talk a little bit more about something a little bit deeper next month. But Amy will be my guest again on week four, week four in March. So that Wednesday. So Thank you so much, Amy. And thank you for having me. Bye, everyone. Bye bye.